what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody, can you hear me? Drop a one really quick. It is cash. What's up, y'all? Dang. Cool. Got a couple thousand people on here. This is lit. This is lit. What's up, y'all? So I'm excited to be on this call with everybody. Um, you guys, if you don't know who I am, my name is Cash Cardi A. I'm cha uh, currently a chairman 50 right here in IA Mastery Academy. And uh, you guys, if you don't know who I am, like I said, I, I like to get kind of straight to the point. Not really here to uh, talk too much about myself or anything like that. Today, what I want to do is I want to go over right how it is that we can scale and build you a very big business. Now, a lot of people know I really I like to do a lot of mindset calls and stuff like that. But today, what I want to do is I want to go over some of the technicalities on things that I've learned um, throughout my years of building. Okay, and if my reception gets bad for any reason, um, everybody make sure you're off the uh, the wifi, the wifi. Um, if my reception gets bad for any reason, please just let me know and I'll go ahead and uh, fix it. Luke, I love you, bro. So you guys, let's go into how we can build your big business. So one thing that we got, all got to understand, right, is this business is built inside the living room. Okay, write that down. This business is built inside the living room. Now, with that part being said, what I want to do is I want to teach you, right, how it is that we can go from building inside that living room all the way into scaling your business to where we're at venue events, okay? And so that's what we're gonna be going over today. Now, in order for us to do that, what I'm gonna have to do, and I wasn't actually planning on getting on the whiteboard this fast, but man, we're gonna get on there this fast. So, welcome to, my, welcome to the lab, guys. Welcome to the lab. It's so funny how everybody knows I wear black. Like everyone's like, what the hell, he's in, he's in white? So, Sunday, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? What's that, oh, Friday. Friday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's just like that, I don't know, it's ugly. Okay, perfect. So. What we want to do, all right, is we want to be able to scale the Tuesdays and Thursdays in any market, in any market uh, across the world, okay, from going from home events to hotel events. Now, with that part being said, all right, what you've got to do is lock in these dates or lock in these days uh, every single week starting in a home event. So, for example, if you're out in California, if you're out in uh, 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 Columbus, if you're out in Europe, or uh, give me a small city that nobody would ever. Montana. Montana. Okay, that's a, that's not a city, man. That's not a city. Drake's in Montana, uh, North Dakota. I'm actually was born in North Dakota. Okay, let's say East Grand Forks, North Dakota. That's where I was born. So. With that part being said, right, no one's ever going to build out there. Not going to happen. But let's just act like we are. So just kidding. People might. That's lit. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with a small crew. Now, when we're there, right, Grand Forks, North Dakota, you're right. So when we're there, what we're going to want to do is we want to take a group of maybe five people, a team of five people, and start doing Tuesday, Thursday events inside a house. House, house, right? inside a house. Now, what we wanna do is lock the, these in stone. This means every single week, it, the question isn't, are we having a home event this week? The question isn't, are we having a home event on Tuesday? The question is not, are we having a home event on, on Thursday? It's, we are having a home event every Tuesday and Thursday once we have around five people. No matter what, we're having an event. No matter what. Now, what we wanna do is make sure we can lock in those locations, okay? Now, I know we have COVID going on and all this other stuff going on, but what I want you to understand is, is that we've got to be able to adapt. So I'm not gonna get into all the, what we can do if COVID, I'm gonna give you the basics and you can use, right, the, the skill set and your expertise and the knowledge that you've gained so far and learn to adapt while this is going on like everyone else has to do. So, to, uh, so Tuesday, Thursday is a set in stone. No matter what, you're throwing an event. If there's a no-show, if you think that there's gonna be a no-show, you throw the event. If anything happens, you throw the event. If, if someone, someone's house, let's just say you're gonna throw it at someone's house, their, mom, their parents end up saying they can't do it anymore, you throw the home event. 
you, or you find out a location, you run it outside. But you do not ever cancel an event. Write that down. I will never cancel an event. I will never cancel an event. Ever. Ever. Never cancel an event. Drop a one if you promise you're never going to cancel an event. Okay, perfect. Now, once this happens, once this happens, it allows the team to figure out how can we produce on these days because the problem is, is people start saying Tuesday and Thursday, it's not working. So let's not do any events. The, the, the question isn't, right, the question isn't, isn't, is this working? It's what am I doing to not make it work? That's the question. The question isn't, is Tuesday, Thursday going to work? It's not, it's, it's not working. It's what do we have to do to make it work? See, a lot of us, we don't throw the event because we're thinking, hey, it's not working. The problem is, is that it's us that's not working. We've got to make it happen. So, again, Tuesday, Thursday. Now what's going to happen is, is that you're going to have no shows. You're going to have weeks, maybe months, maybe years of this not working. You're going to. I, 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 I know that in, uh, throughout my whole organization, the, the veterans that, I've been, that are now chairmen, we were going through years of no shows. Years to, to make this work. But it ended up working when we started working. So Tuesday, Thursdays, it's mandatory. Now what's going to happen is, is we're going to scale from these Tuesday, Thursday, actually really quick. Really quick, sorry. The next thing I want to talk about before we go into scaling is, should we be getting other events up throughout the rest of the week? The answer is, this is the minimum. This is the minimum, right? Minimum is Tuesday, Thursday. You need to get seven to 14 events a week. And when I say 14, yo, uh, ATM's out in Dallas. Are you guys on here? Drop a one if we've had 14, uh, 14 events in one week. Drop a one. Right? We, we, I'm really, really wanting to get on here to teach you guys how to build this. Because it, un until this day, right, out in Dallas, we still have Tuesday, Thursday events with or without me or Drake being there. No matter what, it's going down. It's not because of me, it's because of the system that was created and we taught the leader to, uh, to, to, to build through that system. We taught them to master the system. Now most of you, what you're doing is you're going around teaching people the skills, but you're not teaching them to master the system, right? They, they need to master the skills, but most importantly is they, want, they need to master the system because if you can master the system, the skills, you can, you, can be, you can suck at the skills, master the system, and it'll still help you. The system will help you, right? So this is going to be your minimum. Now, with that part being said, right, in the launch process, in the launch process, and you know how many times I've taught this, yet no one does it. It's, it's crazy. Yet no one does it. it everyone's going to take notes on this training today, but none of you are going to do it. And you want to know why? It's because... You don't want to fail. That's why. You're not, it's going to be hard. You're going to want to do everything except this. You're going to be dropping fire emojis in the chat box. You're going to be dropping one. You're going to be dropping bars. You're going to be hyping me up. You're going to be hyping the team up. And then you're not going to go do this. That's what's going to happen. For, a, a, what, 2,000 people on the call, what's going to happen is, is nothing. And that's the sad reality of this. That means, so 10%. So uh, write this down, by the way. There's a 1% inside IA Mastery Academy. There's a 1%. Just because you signed up within IA Mastery Academy doesn't mean you're doing what, what, what needs to be done to be a 1%er. So there's still going to be a 1%. So out of this call, that means out of 2,000 people, 10% of 2,000, that's 200. That means... Out of 2,000 people on this call, only about two of you are going to apply this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Someone asked, why is that? That's why. Because a lot of people are going to take the notes and not apply it. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. So let's rock it.
you put the home event inside the launch process. Now what happens is, is you will naturally, you will naturally start getting momentum or, and, and naturally start getting home events. Now what happens is, let's just say Jose comes in, okay, boom, right? Jose comes in and you're like, hey, Jose, right? Um, when can you throw a home event this week? Jose says, I can throw one on Sunday. Okay, perfect. Now you lock in Sunday with Jose. And you let the team know, hey, we are going to have a location at this house. We're going to have a location at this uh, at Jose's house out here in Kentucky, right? Or whatever. I can't think of any random places. North Dakota, Grand Forks, okay? So, boom. Now, what we're going to do is we are now going to take that date, set the time or whatever. Now, let's just say, right, um, Spila comes in. Spila comes in. We're going to ask Spila, when can you throw your first home event? And she's going to say, right, Wednesday. So we lock in Spila for Wednesday. Now we're having one, two, three, four events out of seven. Now in order for you to get a business that's going to pay you multiple millions of dollars, what you've got to understand is, is this, right? Your business must be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if we're not having seven days a week home events, your business isn't really open. It's just kind of, it's just kind of open and you're just kind of running a hobby. So we've got to put in the launch process. Now, what we want to do is we want to always be thinking, no matter what, Tuesday, Thursday, this is, we have to have depth of vision. This is going to be the hotel events, right? This is going to be the hotel, the hotel events. So that's always got to be the bigger picture. Tuesday, Thursday, hotel events. We're always thinking that. Now, what you got to understand is, is it, it doesn't matter what happens before, or I'm sorry, it doesn't matter what happens at the event it, on the Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's what matters before and after the event. Before, before Tuesday and after Tuesday. Because if I can bring more people on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to events, then that Tuesday is going to get more packed out. And then if after Tuesday, since it's more packed out, I can close more on Wednesday, I can now bam, bam, book a meeting from a meeting and plug them into the Thursday event. And we already know that the Thursday event's going to be there. The team doesn't even have to ask because we never, ever, ever cancel Tuesdays and Thursdays. So our team knows that once the people that are from Tuesday sign up on Tuesday or Wednesday, we bam, bam them to Thursday. Bam. Right? Now we're getting momentum. Now since we have, we have the Wednesday, we're inviting Wednesday and closing people out. We're also uh, um, taking the people that signed up on Wednesday and we're uh, taprooting them and getting them to invite for Thursday as well. And then we're closing the other people out on Friday because it's not what, it's not what matters at Thursday at the event. It's what matters before and after. That's what matters. Now, with that part being said, this is getting sloppy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into scaling into right the hotels so now what we have is we have monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday okay cool so you guys and ladies Ladies, ladies. All right, let's get this. So now again, what we're going to want to do is after we start getting momentum, I want to teach you a little bit about the hotel events. Everybody wants to be at a hotel event, but like I told you, this business is built in the living room. As a chairman 50, as Matthew Rose, as a chairman 750, is still in the living room. I'm not rich because of uh, hotel events, right? We got rich off of the home events, the living room events, the living room closes, the living, everything is built inside the house. Don't be too good to get these Tuesdays and Thursdays up and get these home events going. I want you to understand what I'm telling you is, is that the, the main thing is, 
is making sure you get these events up and going now, or uh, home events up and going. But now what we want to do on the hotel events is we want to maybe around a, an organization of where we have maybe two P1000s in the market, maybe uh, a P2000 in the market. I, I don't like to give strict guidelines because when my point is, is at some point we're going to want to move to a hotel event. The answer or the question that's going to be brought to me is when do we start throwing hotel events? And the answer is, is when do you ask a guy for his number? When do you ask a girl for her number? There's not a good time. You got to feel it out sometimes, right? So my answer to you on that is we've got to feel this out. We've got to be able to feel this out. So before we go to a hotel event, right, we've got to be thinking, do we have enough money? Logically, by the way, I don't mean that that peasant question of, man, are we going to be able to afford this? I don't think so. That's a peasant mentality. That's a peasant mentality. I'm teaching you how to build a kingdom. So don't think like a peasant, first of all. Right. So I was just getting mad. My bad. So moving forward. All right. What you got to be thinking is, do we have logically enough money? And then. I also like to leave a little bit of room, a lot of bit of room for faith, okay? So with that part being said, I would say around P1000, a couple of P1000s in the market or whatever, and then what we do is we gotta find a venue. Find a venue. Now, I'm doing this training right now because I'm really realizing how many people, how many people, mess this up. They go for the expensive venue. Stop going for the expensive venue. I want this nice one. It's going to be lit. More people are going to come here. But now you're broke. Do you understand that? I mean, I don't care about how much money anyone's making. I'm thinking about overhead. The, the, the venue is going to look like however I want it to look like inside my head. I don't give a shit if it's the nicest venue in the world or whatever. My thing is, is can I throw an event here, pack it out, and is it nasty? Of course, I don't want a nasty venue, right? But at the same time, I'm not over here looking for a six-star hotel. A lot of y'all are going for the venue inside downtown. That's a rookie move. And then they're like, well, cash in Dallas is cheaper. Every, oh my gosh, you know how many markets I hear say that? In Dallas is cheaper. Bro, Dallas, it's going to be $10,000 to throw an event in the middle of downtown. Why would we go in the middle of downtown? Supply and demand. It's common sense. But everybody wants to do this. Oh, cash, it's because of this. No, it's because you're wanting to look in the middle of downtown. Stop looking in the middle of downtown. Go find a venue, find a venue in the outskirts. I can't spell. I don't even know how to spell outskirts. Mm -hmm. Is it outskirts? Is it what it sounds like? Is that right? Okay, it's right. I, just, I was looking at his outskirts and then I was, like, the skirts came in there and I was like, this is a little odd. Uh, I was like, maybe that's not right. So, you guys, you don't got to be smart to do this. So, I'm like, it's common sense. I'm like, how do you spell this? So, find a venue on the outskirts. Now, with that part being said, what, when you look for these venues, you're going to have to call lots of them. Lots of them. Now, little tips I want to tell you is, is it, uh, yes, you want to look at hotels, okay? But what you also want to realize is, a lot of the times when we're building, it's usually not a ho it's usually not just a hotel that we're able to find typically actually in most of the cities you could find maybe an office an office or uh, um, a wedding venue all right you can google just google venues right venues for business venues for workshops venues and you'll be able to find something now, what you got to realize is that it's going to be, right, when, the reason why we want to work for free inside Tuesday, Thursdays, the home events, until we're ready, until we believe we're ready for massive scaling. This means that we have momentum coming in. I'm not saying go right for this. I'm saying that once you see that momentum picking up, it's like now's the time. Boom, let's get this, let's get this venue going. And I'm going to tell you more in a minute. But 
you have to find the venues and you have to look on the outskirts. Stop looking for a, an expensive place. In Dallas, I think that we're getting our place for like $500 an event. And we pack that shit out. Okay? $500 an event. People are, 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 are spending $10,000 for one event for like 200 people. Why? What are you doing? What are you doing? How does that sound logical? Then people are like, well, no one's going to drive over here. They're going to drive where you tell them to drive. They're, like, we've got the opportunity. Stop thinking for, oh, well, people are not going to drive here. They're going to drive there, right? You want to know why? This is my mentality. This is my mentality. They're going to drive. I am the event. Write that down. I am the event. They're going to drive wherever I'm at because I am the event. Write that down. They are going to drive wherever I am, wherever I am, because I am the event. Now get this. Once you're a chairman, you are the event because the event is built around you. So now when you're flying, you can't miss an event as a chairman. A lot of y'all be missing events right now because you're not a chairman, and you're never going to be one because you're not going to the events acting like a chairman. You're not acting as if because at the end of the day, the events are actually built around the chairman. So one thing I knew was is if I miss an event, then they can't show up for me. So I knew I, I am the event before I was a chairman. So they're going to go wherever I tell them to go. They're going to go wherever I want them to go. They're going to show up. I don't care where the prospects are. If it's an hour and a half drive, right, you're showing up for Drake Dennison. You're showing up for Matt Rosa. You're showing up for Alex Morton. You're showing up for Christopher Terry. You're showing up for Gustavo. You're showing up for Cash Cartier. You're showing up for you, your name, fill in the blank. You are the event. So yeah, they better show up for you. That's, that's got to be your mentality. You don't need them. They need you. Don't get it twisted. Talking about they're not going to make the drive. Stop that right now. I'm not trying to hear that. Okay? Man, sorry, guys. Cool. So, boom. Find the venue on the outskirts. All right? Obviously, you want it to be a central location, but you've got to find that, right? Now, the next thing is, is how do we pay? And this is where I really want you to listen. How do we pay? How do we pay? Man, thank God for Starbucks. So, in the beginning, what's going to have to happen, all right, is that we're going to have to get leaders to throw in. Leaders to throw in. In the beginning, we're going to have to have leaders to throw in. But, right, that should only be for the first one to two events, right? One to two events at that location. Because what we do out in Dallas is we charge, right? We charge, our, uh, we charge people who are already in I Am Mastery Academy, which they should. They, sh they, they, should, be, they should be charging. Understand that. Because it's your business. You can invest, right, $10 an event. $10 an event. So $10 on Thursday, I mean on Tuesday, and $10, right, on Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday, you're charging $10 for everyone that shows up. Now, think about this. If... In Dallas, right, was it 50, 50 is 100, right? Is that, okay, cool, can I suck it back? So if only 50 people were to show up, which we get more than that, but if only 50 people show up, it's $500. Now, what did I say the venue was? 500, right? But get this, but get this. What's gonna happen is, is that you want to find a place that's less than the than what you need, right? Meaning, or let you want to pay the least amount as possible because now let's just say that your venue is three hundred dollars, or let's just say it's a two hundred and fifty dollars. Now let's say three hundred, three hundred dollars, right? That means you need thirty people to take ten, uh, thirty people to pay ten dollars. But if only twenty people are showing up, well now what's going to happen is is you're short. 
So you want to find a place that's 200. Now, not actually, not necessarily either. You want to be able to double the profit. Let me, let me explain, right? Because I'm kind of all over on this. My bad. So let me explain. In, uh, in Dallas, right? So I said it's $10 for people to show up. Now, right, it, there's instead of 50 people showing up, 100. Oh, I'm sorry, not, that's not a dollar amount. 100 show up. I'm really te teaching y'all a science right now, right? Because right now, I, I believe that Dallas, Texas is the only place that is throwing consistent events Tuesdays and Thursdays every single week, and they always have been, even through Corona. They always, Tuesday, Thursday events, hit it for now a year and a half. I believe truly they're the only ones to do that. And I'm, the re I'm not saying that to brag, right? I'm saying that so you guys understand that there's a science to this and I'm giving you the juice. I want this company to, to build into the heavens. I wrote my mentors today and I said, can you imagine if everybody would take what we're doing and we're throwing hotel events around the world? The problem is, is not enough people are doing it. So... 100 people now show up. Now that means that we've now made, right, $1,000. Happened, right? The event was, the event was 500, right? The event was 500. Which now means that 500 is also left over. But guess what we're able to do with that? Now, if this was the event on Thursday over here, right? And we, we, we profit now that 500. We brought in 1,000, but we profit the 500. We can now pay for the Thursday's event. We can now, now what we're able to do is instead of, remember I said in the beginning, the leaders are going to have to throw in for the events. But now what's going to happen is we're able to push the, people, the event forward. Now this is called other, this is OPM, other people's money. We're using other people's money to pay the event forward, okay? Now, Eventbrite is what a lot of people utilize. We use Square. Eventbrite takes $2, and it, we don't have to eat that money, but I also think for the team as well. I don't, a $2 still starts adding up. I don't want to put my team, I never want to set my team up to fail. So at the end of the day, I could be like, Eventbrite is really easy, right? But, you know, um, but the team is going to have to pay $2. Well, if we're bringing 100 people to the event and, and to, uh, Eventbrite is taking $2, Eventbrite is taking now, really, what is that, $200? $200. We're losing $200. But on Square, right, I don't know what it is, but they only take a couple of cents. And so now, right, now we're able to keep the cost down. We're able to keep the cost down. So instead of charging $12 and having them eat the $12, we could charge $10.50 and we're profiting. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So that's the other thing. Now, when a top leader comes out, when a top leader comes out, this is where you can really, really get revenue. This is where you can really, really, really get revenue, right? And the reason why is because once you're running this consistently and now a top leader is coming out hypothetically on Thursday, what you're able to do now is you're getting this momentum going. And now you charge, I don't know who's dropping that in the chat, but um, you're a beast, whoever's dropping notes. Um, now the top leader comes out and you charge 20 or $25, right? 20 or $25 when they come out. And why are we going to do that? Because now we're going to really, we're going to triple, quadruple. We're going to triple, yeah, give her some love. We're going to triple, quadruple, right? Our, our bank account, our business bank account. We're going to triple or quadruple it. So now, instead of, instead of us making 500, right, in Dallas, we've made, I mean, what, 7, 8, 10, 
Around there? Right, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. We in Dallas when the top leader comes out, that's what we get. Right? So guess what? Now if we're we start taking L's and now we're not profiting in Dallas, guess what happens? We're not, if we're not profiting in Dallas, what's going to happen is, is that we're able to take from the savings account that we've got from when the top leaders came out because we're able to double our profits when the top leader came out. So now we keep that, that we keep that, right, that event really big. I'm sorry, we keep that account really big, okay? We keep it really big. Now, think about what I'm teaching you right now. Think about what I'm teaching you right now. Now we're going to have $3,000. Now get this. You can now use this. You can now use this money, all right, to invest in the squad, invest in the leaders. You can run a promo with it if you want to, or you could do something like that. But let me tell you something really fast. If I, if, oh my gosh, I do not respect anyone that profits off of these events and they take the money for themselves. I never want to hear about anyone doing that. That is a snake. I don't care if you've done that, that's snaky. Just being calling it exactly what it is. You don't ever take the team's money and use their money for yourself. And so even, and yo, my whole squad will even tell you the, the, uh, the Square account is in my name. I don't even remember what the password is, to be honest with you. My whole squad's got the password. They, they, because I share it. I want them. I want to be transparent. I want them. I know that they trust me, but I want them to see the account. Right, so my, not everybody has it, but my top leaders do, and they can see that cash isn't stealing money. Cash isn't using money for himself, right? And now what happens is it creates even more trust as well, because that's not my money. That's the squad's money, and we will make decisions to do stuff with that money together. But don't ever, ever, ever profit off these events and take that money. You use that to, to produce and run your business because at the end of the day, money is fuel, right? Money is fuel. So you've got to be charging maybe around $10 or so to get it off the ground. Now, in the beginning of this, you might only break even and you can't pay it forward, all right? And so I say one or two events on here, right? But honestly, you might take a couple of L's as leaders, and that's where you guys have got to step up and say, hey, who can, hey, like, let's, let's, there's, uh, we're, we missed a hundred, right? We missed a hundred or we're short by a hundred now. And if that happens, okay, then you got to make up for the hundred, but it's better than making up for 500. Okay. Am I still lagging? I'm good. Perfect. Perfect. So that's how we can do that now. After that, look, now we, I, 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 I went through all that, right? Again, at some point, you don't, don't go in here thinking that it's going to be easy. You're probably going to lose money at first. Get ready for that. You're probably going to fail at first. Get ready for that. Now, the next thing I want you to know is you've got to, uh, I recommend, I recommend getting, um, what's that called? A projector. Because they will charge you like $200 an event just for a projector. I also remember we went to go, <clears throat> um, so we shared <laughs> the, money, the money, right? Like I say, it's Dallas's money. And I remember I called Nigel and Cullen. We weren't bringing in a lot of money at this time. And I was like, and by the way, Nigel is someone that's really like, man, like, let's not use a lot, right? I'm more like in between and Khalil just does not care. <laughs> so I call up, I call up uh, Nigel and Khalil. And I was like, man, Nigel's going to be pissed. And they're like, what'd you do? And I was like, man, I just spent $1,000 on uh, speakers for the venue. <laughs> and I, I think Nigel was actually chill with it. But I remember I was like, man, I was not expecting to spend that much money. But you guys, you got to get speakers as well. And then we get a designated, uh, um, a designated DJ, more so meaning someone on the team. For us, we use Savage, right? Yes, that's his real name. Shout out to Savage. Love you, Sean. Sean Savage, right? He's lit. And now what happens is, is that we have somebody that's always in charge of something. We also have people that are in charge of running the front door. The front door. <clears throat> we also have people <clears throat> putting on wristbands. I don't know if we do. Do we have wristbands in Dallas? Still do? 
Uh, check, do, they do check marks. Cheaper. That's good. Right? We have people that are responsible for finding venues. And by the way, you will never have enough venues. So always get a, a plethora of them. Always. you got to call like a hundred, at minimum 100 venues. I'm, not, I'm like so serious. Uh, call 100 venues. Get 100 different. Find something. People are going to be willing to work with you, uh, but you will, lose, you will lose venues. Other thing, be respectful, right? You, I can't stress that enough, or you will lose the venue. <clears throat> Especially network marketers are going in there, being loud, blah, 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 right? Make sure when you're going in there, you're being respectful, Right? Have people help have people helping control the environment, right? <clears throat> I don't I don't I don't mold into the environment, I create the environment. Cool. So finding a venue, uh, give check marks or wristbands so you know that they paid. Alright? Watch out for people who take screenshots. Alright? Uh, people will try to sneak in. Now the other thing is, is I typically like to have the women running the front. Women for whatever reason are a lot less likely to let anyone sneak in. The other thing I've really realized is that you want it to be people that are not on the same team. And the reason for that is because, is because if you have two people that are not from the same team, they're less likely to conspire, uh, uh, conspire with each other, if that makes sense. So if you have somebody that their sidelines, they're not gonna let someone else's team sneak in and vice versa. But if it's two people on the same team, then what's gonna happen is, They'll be like, okay, yo, let's let's look cash in, right? You know, like cash is on both of our teams, let's let them in, right? That we don't want that. And don't be afraid to turn people around because they don't have the money. You better go get the money. Go get the money. It's ten dollars for you to invest in your business. And it is worth it. Alright? So I see a lot of leaders, what they do to get this money going is they all say, all seven of us, let's throw in X amount of money, and when we get all this money together, right, we're going to get a venue, and we're going to do this every single month, and it doesn't work because most people just, quite frankly, the leaders at the time cannot afford it. And, and at the same time, they shouldn't have to. It should be a group team effort. We're entrepreneurs. You've got to invest in your business, and $10 for a, hundred, a, a multiple $100 event, right, uh, uh, it's, it's not asking for much. It's asking to contribute to the culture, contribute to uh, your business and everyone else's business, and service of, uh, service of many leads to greatness, right? So we got that. Now, the, now the, la the, the last thing I want to go over on this event thing is this, the scaling part of it, which is going to be, right, um, oh, at some point, we might only have enough money for one venue. Remember, we get a home. And then, we, and then we have a home. And it starts like that. With the, with the future thought of this is one day going to be a hotel event of thousands of people. And we scale. But what's going to happen is, is we might only have enough money for one in the beginning. Don't try to go get two right out the gate. You just want enough money for one out the beginning. Now what's going to happen is we're going to transition. And this is now going to be a hotel. This will now be the hotel event, hypothetically, it doesn't matter which one. And then this one remains the home event. And that's why you, this is why it's called scale, right? Scaling your business, if you don't know what that means, it means to grow your business, scale and make multiple locations, right? Wait, like, uh, start investing more and all this other stuff. But you gotta start small and then grow it big. You don't wanna just go hotel, hotel, oh my God, we don't have enough money. You scale it, right? Now, hotel and home. Right now, what's going to happen is this will start getting momentum, and once it starts getting momentum, this will should also start growing, and then more money should be coming into this. And now you don't wait until you just have enough money to to to, to open up another home or another hotel. You might have to do it and take an L. You might be right uh, uh, making enough on here to almost cover both, but you might have to take an L on a hundred. I have to put down money on faith sometimes, and I really realized that on the come up, that sometimes I was like, I don't know, all I know is that we're moving so fast, and I can tell you right now that we've got to make it to where there's two venue events going on, right? Never food, never food, never, ever, never, ever, 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 bring food, ever, 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 ever. Mons are so right. It's a distraction. 
Then we scale this to the hotel. Then we scale that to the hotel. And now it should be um, home event, home event, hotel event, home event, hotel event, home event, home event. Now we've got momentum before the hotel event, after the hotel event, which is again before that hotel event, and then we got it after. And now at the home event, we're always bam famming to these events. Boom, right? No food because it's a distraction. They're, they're gonna be, they're focused on the food, they're chomping on it. You're not there, they're not there to eat, right? They're there to watch a presentation. You can, you can give them water, right? Uh, but again, don't go invest extra money. So, I notice a lot of people want to go invest on so many stuff and they make it so much more expensive. A lot of times if you get a venue, right, they're going to provide water anyways, okay? But if it's a home event or whatever, there's no need to go buy a whole bunch of waters and stuff like that, right? And it messes people's houses up and all this other crap. You can if you want with, when it comes to water, but that's it. Now, the, next, the, the, next, the, the last part of it is the environment of the events on all of them. On all events, there should be music. There should be music right when the, right when you guys get there and it's game time, there should be music. So typically, there should be a 30 to 45 minute registration, right? 30 to 45 minute, nah, let's just say 30. Network marketers, I say 45, that means an hour and 15. If I say 30, it means 45, right? So um, let's just say 30, okay? You want music playing, all right? Music playing, what else? Um, you've got to have, um, Make sure guests are in front. All right. Now the other thing is, is if you're in a house, it doesn't. It's still guests in front or give them the couch. Guests should be in the front, sitting down. It should not be team members, right? It should not be team members, right? So make sure you got that as well. Music needs to be, the second the person is done speaking, the music should be turned on, right? The second, the, hey, I'm, you know, my name is Cash Card. Hey, you guys, you, th you know, thanks everyone for coming. All right, I'll see you at the top because the bottom's with your crowd. Events over, boom, music's up, bow, right? So it, it, it helps keep that energy really high, and now all you're doing is closing, okay? So music, guests in front, all right? Um, right, make sure that you start on time. Don't wait for people. What I've realized is what happens is a lot of people get into this thing where they're waiting. Oh, we got, we got uh, you know, three members on the team haven't showed up yet. We started at 45. The event, uh, uh, I started at 45, what the heck? I mean, the event, uh, the, 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 event, the event should only be 45 minutes to an hour maximum, maximum on the hour, all right? Um, our testimonials, this is key because none of you are gonna listen to me, okay? On testimonials, a testimonial is a testimonial. It does not mean go give them all the knowledge you've learned. Because what you're doing when, when we say, hey, go ahead and do 30 seconds, and you're like, what's up, you guys? You know, um, all I can tell you guys is thoughts become things and blah, blah, blah. And when you go mentoring the crowd, you got, what you're doing is you're literally showing them that you're not a normal person. They're like, I can't go do this. I can't. You're like, you're supposed to be a testimonial, meaning I'm not anybody, but I got results. That's what we're showing. And then you're going up there, right, speaking like, I mean, damn, you're like, you sound like Barack Obama giving a speech up there. Like, damn, like, did you have the whole thing written out before? And now they're over here like, how the hell am I going to be able to do that? That's not a testimonial. A testimonial is, hey, what's up, guys? My name is Cash Cartier, 29 years old, right? Before I started this, I was going nowhere in life. I was a busboy, a felon, right? And what happened was I got introduced to this company, and it's completely changed my life. Now I'm able to do the things I want to do, travel the world, blah, blah, blah. And if it wasn't for this company, I wouldn't be here. I love all the people. Everything, everyone's been so amazing to me, right? I've had so much growth. This has changed my life, my family's life. Right? And I'm watching it change everyone else's lives around me. So that part being said, you guys, I love all of you. I'll see you on the top because the bottom's way too crowded. Boom. Not mindset. Okay? So testimonials, make them 30 seconds. 
of a testimonial, not of mindset. All right? There's that, which no one's going to listen. It's crazy. Right? I, like, literally, I'll go up to an event. I'm like, 30 seconds. Seriously, don't do this. And they do it anyways. I've just never seen anything like it. Like, you, the reason why you're doing that is because you have an ego. You're doing that because you want that spotlight. You want that attention. You want to. That's why you're doing that. But you're ruining it for everyone else. And then when one person does it, the next one does it. And now we're doing two hours of, of, of testimonials of everyone talking about themselves. So stop doing that. All right? So serious, man. It's crazy. Um, the other thing is on what ranks or whatever, what I like to do is it depends on who's really in the crowd, right? So if we have a whole bunch of uh, uh, chairmen in a, in a room, right, what we're going to do is we're going to have all the uh, maybe all, P150s raise your hand all, everyone, or stand up or raise your hand or whatever, and we, we have them clap. And then what we do is P600, have them stand up, raise your hand, have them clap, right? And then, all right, P1000, whatever. Then hypothetically, P2000, there might be three of them. Hey, let's have them do a 30-second testimonial. And then typically on a chairman or something, right, we might let that individual give a little bit of mindset because they have a little bit more power at the time. And then you're done, they pass it back, and then you close. Next part is, right, uh, the, the temperature in the room. It's got to be low. What do we do at, like 67 degrees? 68 degrees, it, and you want to get this going an hour or two before people get to the house or before they get to the, 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 uh, the hotel because it will be very hot if, it's, if, it, if you're packing it out. So you want to get it, the, it working and get the temperature there. You don't do it when it starts getting hot or it's going to be way too late and then everyone's going to be sweating and all that other stuff. Randy, Randy Webb is a trip. He says, say it louder, 68 degrees. Yeah, he knows, right? I'm telling you guys, trust me, you've got to do it early. Um, what else is it? Um, the temperature. Oh, when the event ends, do not go talking to each other. Oh my gosh. I'm going to say it again. When the event ends, do not go talking to each other. You're there to close. You're not there to speak to each other. You're not there, oh, yo, what's up, bro? You're not there to go talk to the chairman. You're there to go close out your team member. If the, if the choice is between talking to Matt Rosa or closing someone out on your team, it should be closing to someone out on your team. If the choice is be between getting a picture with one of the chairmen or, or helping with closing, it should be helping with closing. That's what it should be. And you might want the picture or you might want a nugget so bad, but your time will come. You will get that chance again. Go close. Don't go up because it's crazy when I want to go close people up. Everyone comes swarming around me. I'm like, well, I'm trying to close right now. What's up? Like, I'm a chairman because closing. I'm not a chairman because I want to go talk to people. We're not there to go talk. We had all week to talk. All right? So there's that. Those are going to be events, scaling your event, throwing the event, controlling the environment. Oh, when it comes to um, use a slideshow, you guys. Use the slideshow. Stop being cute. Use the system. Stop being sexy. It's not like, oh, man, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And what I realized was this. Use the tools. Remember I said system dependent. Use the tools. Okay. The slideshow wasn't made for you to not use it. It was made for you to use it. If you want to build an empire, use it. And oh, dress professionally. Thank you. Dress professionally. Women, dress, dress professionally. Cover up. All right? Men, man. Uh, tank tops, sweatpants, sandals. No. No. Right? Dress how you want to be addressed. You've got to do that. Do not go showing up, all right, in, sw in shorts. No shorts, okay? There's no, no shorts. Dress at, at, at home events. It's either dress all the way up, suited and booted, or dress like you're going to the club and you're wanting to impress someone. But never just show up or, and, and, and get on there like that. Same with on your calls or whatever, right? I mean, yo, I'm a chair of 50. I could go in here some sweats if I wanted to, right? Show some respect, right, for yourself and for other people. Hygiene, same thing, okay? All this seriously matters. I'm really wanting to teach you about events today, 
all right? So dress, right, how you want to be, uh, or um, dress how you want to be addressed, okay? Hygiene, all of that, right? Go, I'm not saying go spend a lot of money. I'm just saying don't go in there looking like crap. I wore the same thing every single time to an event. I mean, shit, I still wear black every day, right? I wore the same thing every single time to an event, right, when I couldn't afford clothes. It, but it was better than wearing sweatpants. And I used to do that. That's why I'm teaching you not to, all right? Um, man, was that homie vans controlling the environment? I want to make sure I hit everything. Mm -mm -mm. Right? Oh, energy in the crowd. That's what it was. The feedback of the crowd is important. Right? Too much is a distraction. Write that down. Too much energy, too much feedback is a distraction. Too much energy and too much feedback is a distraction. Too much energy and too much feedback is a distraction. Not enough energy, right? Not enough energy, not enough feedback, right? Is literally, right, is literally just like, uh, I don't even know what to even call that. It's just, it's just like not, it's just not it. <laughs> I mean, it's just not it. Like, you've got to give them like, oh, that was good, right? Every once in a while. It doesn't need to be all the time, right? But you've got to give, you've got to give feedback. As a chairman 50, I'm telling you, I, be, I speak a lot. I want to be able to get that feedback. I need to feel it out. I got I, I to gotta be able to feed it, feel it out. All right? So you've got to get that energy up and going. Keep in mind, they don't know who's already in and who's not. On your, being on your phones, right? Being on your phones. I never started getting on my phone until I was at chairman 50, and I have to deal with other teams when I'm at the event. Okay? I would have to deal with other teams when I'm at the event, all right? And I'm just going to be honest with you, all right? I'm just going to be honest with you, right? You should not be on your phone like this. Otherwise, they don't know if you're a guest or not. Now, they're going to go do the same thing. There's that, right? Always show up to the event if you're a leader. I don't ever, yo, know, at the end of the day, most people are not going to do anything I just taught. They're not going to put in the launch process, and they're not going to show up to the events. And they're not going to go do it. But what you got to do is you got to show up no matter what. When my family passed away, I still showed up to the event. So I'm not wanting to hear any excuses about why you're not there, especially if you're the top leader. I, on Drake's chairman run, on, honestly, his 5K run, he was going to seven, 14 events, home events, and then showing up at the hotel events. I mean, it's crazy. And at grind sessions. And spending the night with the squad and grinding all night. But he hit chairman 10. And then we got some people not doing it. Show up to the event. You have no idea. If you're a leader and your team does not see you there, it changes everything. If you never, I'm telling you, as a leader, if you choose one time not to show up, you really, really, really drop a bomb on the squad. Like you're literally ruining everything. Show up to the event. Right? Gabbert? Yeah, someone text him. Right? Show up to the event. I will never want to hear about anyone. Missing an event, especially if you're on the squad, especially if you're on the squad. You guys, right, this company right now is the best company that's ever been made. This isn't hype. This is facts, all right? I see people, right, wanting to manipulate. They want to compare the, to us. They don't know what we've really got. I've been in other companies. I've seen it all, all right? And I'm telling you right now that this company is where it's at. I am, I am made. I am, I am made. I would not be here if it wasn't for that company. And I'm going through a lot in life right now. I'm done with my training. I'm ending it on the mindset. And I want you guys to connect with me on this. This company right now is the best thing that you can ever, ever even imagine. You know what's crazy is you did imagine this. You just don't know it. You don't remember, right, when you sat there and you prayed to God, right? You sat there and you prayed to God about uh, how you want to get rich, how you want the Lambo. You want to retire your parents. You just didn't know how. You don't remember. So you imagine getting rich and God sends you the vehicle, but you didn't want to get in the car and start it and make the commute and make the drive. We were, this is the GPS coordinate for your dream. And that's, I mean, I mean, this call started with 2,000 people. Now we're at 1.2, 800 people chopped up the call to be a peasant. Understand that, right? Understand that. I've never missed an event. I've never missed an event. That's why I'm a chairman 50. 
I'm telling you right now, I don't know. There's times I don't want to go to the event, and there's a lot of times I don't want to go to the event. It's not a good time to go. I got other things to do. I got to book venues around the world. I got life going on. I'm depressed. I got this. I got that. But I show up because I said I would as a leader. And I know people just need to see my face and say, cash has got me, right? Because I know as a leader that when I walk in the door, there's warmth there. And I, and I go, it, it goes to show my, consistent, my consistency, uh, consistency shows my love. Your consistency shows your love. And if you don't show up, you're showing the team that you might abandon me or you don't care as much as you say. I'm showing up every single time. Every single time. All right? I've been reading this post a lot lately. And again, I'm just on the, my mindset part and then we're done. I don't want this to be the longest call in the world. Uh, but I want you guys to really, really get, right, really get what, we're, what we're doing here. All right? Many of you have heard this many times, and I'm going to keep reading it because God is really telling me to. And this is a post before, right, before everyone was in IA Mastery Academy, before Jason Brown, before Alex Morton, before Matt Rosa, before I was in here, before Godsey was in here. This, this, for, uh, uh, this post that I made inside a forum was around before anyone even really knew what IAM Mastery Academy was. Understand that, right? This is in June, June 6th of 2015, all right? This is back when I was a felon, right? I, I, I couldn't get a job anywhere. I just got out of prison, and I was looking for a way to make shit happen. Understand this, right? Here, here's the post. Hey, guys, thanks for reading my post. Here's a little introduction about me. I'm 24 years old. I moved to Texas from California, and I moved for one reason, which was to change my life. In California, I grew up in a bad town, did bad things, and I was sentenced to prison at the, age of eight, uh, at the age of 18, and I got out when I was 21. I wasn't able to graduate high school, so I got my GED in prison. While I was in prison, I had a few near-death experiences, which taught me that this was not the life that I wanted to live. I began to read books of internet marketing, etc., and although I don't understand it very well, it, it has always been highly intriguing to me. Um, when I moved to Texas, I knew getting a job would be, diff uh, be difficult, but I guess I didn't know how difficult it would be. I landed a job as a busboy, in which I still currently do. I also attended community college, and I was on the honors roll. I then tried to uh, transfer to a university, and I unfortunately found out that I am unable to take classes at our university due to my felony. Now get my mindset. You can tell I'm depressed, right? You can tell I'm hurt. You could tell I'm scared. You could tell my back's against the wall. You could tell I'm desperate. But get my mindset on this. After struggling with job security and education, I have begun, I have begun to, to take these problems into my own hands. So if I cannot attend college, I will invest my saved money from busting tables into education. And if I cannot land a job in corporate America, then I will work for myself. I've been learning to day trade for almost a year now. I love the concept. I have used some of my own money and have made a little bit, but I am not consistent enough to make a steady income. I will continue to study and learn more tricks until, until I accomplish this goal, until I accomplish this goal, until, right? After, after becoming a full-time day trader, after I become a full-time day trader, after, meaning I said it was done. I said, I'm not going to stop until after I become a full-time day trader, I would also like to start learning how to do internet marketing or make some type of residual income or make some type of residual income. Day trading and internet marketing and the ability to make a residual income is highly intriguing to me. I am very self-motivated. I'm not looking to get rich quick. I will, I will wake up early and go to sleep late. I will study when everyone else is, is partying. I will study when everyone else is sleeping. And I will study while everyone else wakes up hungover. I do not have a real niche as far as something that I can, uh, that I can do or market or anything of that sort. What I'm saying right there is I'm saying I'm not talented at anything. I don't know what, what, what business I could do. I don't know how I'm going to make money. I don't know what I'm going to market. I do not have a real niche as far as something that I can market online or anything of that sort. I'm still searching for what exactly I'm wanting to do, but I just, needed, I just needed to know that it was possible, and that is why I am here. 
I actually had a video, I actually had an idea of a video, a video channel to show people a rich lifestyle, even though I don't have one yet. Even though I don't have one yet. Now we got the YouTube channel up, making the residual income, right? Trading, right? All the flying around the world. I was a busboy when I wrote that. I'm a busboy right now, and I'm looking at you right now. That's a testimonial. That's a testimonial. So if you're going to sit there and act like you don't know if you can make it, who are you to say you can't? Don't sit there and lie to yourself. How dare you tell yourself that you can't make it? How dare you tell yourself? How dare you let the haters win? How dare you sit there and listen to society? How dare you sit there and say you signed up and, and you, you promised on your why that you were going to make this happen, and now you're acting like a peasant? How dare you do that? I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. I'm telling you it's going to be hard. Right? I'm telling you, it's going to suck. I'm telling you that literally your back is going to be against the wall. I'm telling you, you might go into a lot of debt. I'm saying you probably will. I'm telling you right now that you've got to understand that you're going to go through a lot, but at one point, it's going to happen. At one point, right? At some day, it's going to happen. All you got to do is have faith of a mustard seed. Faith of a mustard seed. I didn't really believe I'd hit chairman. I just had a small part of me that would. I never thought I would hit it. Then my, I went through all of that. My family died, little sister, my grandma, right? My, my, my mom, all, all of them gone in the same three weeks. And then what do you know, four months later, right? Chairman 10, after four years of me grinding in the company, right? It took me four years to hit Chairman 10. And it was four months after my family died. And then two months after Chairman 10, Chairman 25, nine months later, right, total, okay? Chairman 50, my whole body, and now we're gonna take Chairman 100 too. And I'm telling you right now, I haven't been in the trenches like I'm supposed to be. I've had a lot of stuff going on. I've been, I've been going through it in my head, but you wanna know what? I'm gonna practice what I preach, just like I've been telling everyone to do. So that part being said, right? Right? I'm I am Mastery Academy made, right? I'm gonna be here, right, for the all, for the whole the whole time, right? That whole time that this company is up and running, all right? So help me God. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not here to just build it with ATMs. I'm gonna build this company with everyone else. Drop a one if you're committed to building this company. Drop a one if you're going to build this company and chase your dreams, right? You better go hit chairman. You better go pack that trading account out, right? And you better take everyone to the top with you. Stop being a peasant. Drop that peasant mentality. Stop lying to yourself about why you can't do it. You better go make it happen. I love you guys. This is Cash Cartier, the best to ever do it. I love all of you guys. I'll see you at the top because the bottom is way too crowded. I am Mastery Academy isn't everything. It's the only thing. Let's get it.